So hello everyone, my name is Ashwin and I'm a third year PhD student in filmmaking. Thank you for joining us today. Um, along with me, we have Rosemary, Natalie and Beatrice. I'll let them introduce uh, themselves. Uh, this is basically a question and answer session that uh, is conducted for the ACI, the Arts and Creative Industry. So please feel free to type in your questions and <clears throat> I'll start without wasting any time. So the first question, can you give us some background on yourself and an overview of the subject area you teach? So anyone of you can start first. So I'll, I, jump. I'll jump, I'll do, yes. go on Natalie, no, no you start, go on. I'll jump in, shall I, then you go next, pictures. Um, so I'm Natalie Garrett-Brown and I'm Head of Department for Music, Writing and Performing Arts. Um, my background is dance and performance, so that's the kind of area that I've taught in universities many years and that's where my professional practice sits. So passing over to Beatrice. Thank you. So I'm Beatrice Newman. Hi, everybody. I'm the head of department for fashion at UEL. Um, my career spans 10 plus years. Um, I've been uh, teaching for that time in uh, numerous institutions and now um, at UEL leading an amazing team of professionals and, and industry uh, tutors. Um, I have uh, my own business called Koleki. It's a fashion women's wear brand um, going from strength to strength each year. Um, a lot of my focus really is um, not just fashion education, but then how that really developed into sustainable fashion businesses and enterprise. Um, and I'd be looking forward to answering any questions as we go along. And I'll sort of segue or pass over to Rosemary. Hello, everyone. Nice to meet you today. My name is Rosemary Stott, and I'm the head of department of media and these three departments form the School of Arts and Creative Industries. So my background is in film. I've taught for many years in film, starting off um, in uh, Germany, actually. So, you know, working in a film school and uh, studying film, making films sometimes, but mainly I'm a film historian. I'm an uh, sort of internationally recognised scholar in uh, film in Germany, particularly East German film. And I'll maybe tell you later how I got interested in that. <laughs> so thank you so much for the introduction. So the second question is, can you tell us the story behind your career? I'm sure people would love to know this. Okay, so starting off with Beatrice, please. Or, yeah. That's fine, I can go. <laughs> Um, so, um, like many of you looking to study um, at UEL um, for fashion, for instance, um, I started my career as a student. Um, I did a BTEC national diploma um, because fashion or the creative subject, I thought it would be great to get more vocational skill base and just really understand um, what area of the art, if you will, that I would like to go in. So I actually studied photography, studied a bit of graphic design and also fashion. Um, I had a knack for fashion, I always wanted to do it. So I think the BTEC gave me some confidence to just go with it. Um, and I guess the rest is really history. I did my BA and then um, later my MA um, at London College of Fashion. Um, where my collection was um, viewed at the Victorian Albert Museum um, amongst a select number of students. So for me, that was one of my highest achievements as a student um, and really setting a foundation for my career. So um, later, a year after that show, I actually launched my business. Um, and uh, just being really understanding how business really works within a creative subject because it's something that's not necessarily discussed or in my time um, in education, something that was really being taught. So a lot of failures, but a, um, a lot of learning um, as we go along and now eventually uh, success as we continue to grow and move forward. And it's sort of those successes that I build into um, my learning and teaching at places such as UEL. Um, my educational career started as a volunteer, actually, um, with an amazing charity that unfortunately is no longer existing called Fashion Awareness Direct, or FAD for short. Um, and again, I, it was just um, a, a word of mouth or 
networking, if you will, that got me into teaching. Um, someone told me yesterday that um, I am not a teacher and I said, well, you don't teach until you do. <laughs> I guess what that really means is you gain experience as you go along. And as long as you're really good, I, I guess talking about methodology and just sharing your practice, it is a form of teaching. And that's really how my career grew in fashion. And now here I am today. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, Natalie, if you can. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So um, I began uh, doing out of school and out of college performing arts and had lots of great teachers who encouraged me to take it to the next step. So um, my background is I trained in contemporary dance in uh, two of the London conservatoires. Um, but I think what I'd like to just perhaps highlight here is how I've always combined making work, performing and teaching right from the beginning. So for me, it's always been an entwined pathway um, and then more recently uh, well more recently in the last 10 years or so being involved in higher education at a kind of leadership level um, so I think I would just encourage anyone who perhaps hasn't yet found their way into formal education or training uh, for their interest or their passion in creative arts industries whether that's performing arts or media or fashion or writing or music um, to know that there's many way, many pathways in and many ways forward from that um, and to really uh, embrace kind of what your skill set is and, and, and move towards that. Um, I didn't have any formal training in those areas until I went to kind of degree level study. Um, so just good to name that, I think. Um, and the other thing I think that's really uh, important to me at the moment is collaborative working and interdisciplinary working. And I see that when I'm working with my great team at the university, but also my creative work. So whether that's working with photographers or lighting designers or costume designers, um, um, and like the enterprising aspect of what we teach at UEL, that's another really strong theme of what we encourage students to build their expertise in while they're with us. Um, Hand it over to Rosemary, perhaps. Thank you, Rosemary. Hello again. So yeah, so as I mentioned, my discipline is film. And when I started, when I studied, it was very difficult to find a degree in film. Uh, so I actually studied literature and that gave me a passion for storytelling. And then I also studied languages. So I've always had a strong interest in film in different cultures and how film is received in different cultures. Um, and yeah, I think we really bring that to the fore as well in, in the University of East London, where we're a very diverse community. We like to explore the media and the arts and film in different cultures, really, you know, a melting pot of, of different experiences. And our curriculum is certainly not restricted to just film in, in the UK. So that's, uh, I think, why I'm passionate about being at University of East London, because I've always made it um, really my, my interest to combine uh, that that sort of yeah different in, interest in languages and culture as well as film. But as I said, I'm a film historian above all. But I've seen how the the, the media disciplines have changed over the last ten to twenty years whilst I've been teaching in higher education. And it's much more about making, getting hands on now. And uh, Ashwin here, he's studying filmmaking. And as I said, when I started out, that was really hard to, to find a course on that. It's hard to believe now. So we really embrace that at the University of East London and our facilities for making uh, media mm -hmm. are very good. We have uh, specialist studios and we also have a range of uh, technical facilities and above all the people, the technicians and the industry focused staff who can support you in making those films. So. Yeah, I think I would say I, I wish I could have studied at University of East London. Um, but as I say, I've, I've seen and made and really um, hopefully contributed to that shift in those disciplines. And uh, as I said, I worked in, in Germany in a film school. Um, that was one of my first jobs. And that really inspired me uh, when film school education has now come into universities, really. So, you know, you don't need to go to a specialist film school. We do it all. And you have the benefits of everything that a university can offer, which is interacting, as Natalie said, with other subject areas, other disciplines, learning uh, within a context of, of uh, great facilities and interaction with, with 
many, many different uh, people. I'll stop there. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah. Moving on to the next question. So what inspires you to teach in this field of study? What inspires? So what does inspire you in this field of study that you teach? Um, yeah, Natalie, if you can go first. Yeah, sure. Happy to jump in. Um, oh, my God. We'd, there's so much inside of that, isn't there? So that's such a great question. Um, I think there's many things, but one of them I would name is the opportunity to work with people that are going to be the next generation in the industry or in that creative arts practice. And that can be students that are coming in at foundation level right through like yourself to PhD level. Right. And how you it doesn't matter what level of student you're working with, you're always going to be learning something from them as well as guiding them and kind of taking them into the world that you know and that discipline that you know. Um, and I suppose really specifically for dance, there is something very special about being in the studio and figuring stuff out together and really in that um, live exchange of knowledge and uh, skill building that I really still love after many years of being in a studio. <laughs> but maybe, maybe I'll pass over to Beatrice now to add to that. Yeah, sure. No, I think that's, um, I would say exactly the same thing. It's that sense of community. Um, I think also within, when we talk about the creative subject, it's really about, you know, enterprise again, and how do we move forward in not just developing our arts and our passion, but then how do we bring it forward to the world and hopefully, you know, create a living out of it? Um, because we all know that art subjects don't necessarily get the I think the credit that it deserves and how we really support society and you know a world of our arts is detrimental I think so you know we're really you know just as important as you will find us with other academic subjects and so um, I think you'll find I agree with Rosemary you know I wish I came to UER because there's such a focus on enterprise um, and you know how does that work within the, the creative industries and it's, um, I think, a challenge, but a really good challenge because it gets you thinking outside of the box. Um, it gets you thinking about historical and traditional methods, but also what newer methods there are. So, for example, at UER, we're really looking now into technology and not necessarily just digital, but it's also like um, new ways of thinking, critical thinking, um, new ways of exploration. Um, and for instance, if it's dance, um, in fashion, it's new machinery and how you develop things from idea to, you know, um, conception. And even in film, as Rosemary said, working with diverse cultures, you know, diversity is such a strong theme. So I think in a nutshell, I would say, you know, three main themes for us at university is sort of enterprise, diversity um, and community. Thank you, and Rosemary. Yeah, no, that's great. So, yeah, the question is about what what inspires me. I mean, inspires inspires me every day at, at uh, in in our uh, environment, as Beatrice says. That's a brilliant answer, Beatrice. And you know, we're we're all teachers, so I think you know we all get inspired by our students and our colleagues who are um, all very knowledgeable, and not just in their own discipline, but also about you know the industries that that we want to get you into but i suppose more widely in my in my life i think you know to be studying the arts is to study you know a passion really and that's what's really great if if you do study within our school everybody's got got the passion for the subject and uh, you can make your hobby uh, a career you know if you think of filmmaking or social media we're starting a new degree in social media this coming year, not this year, the one after, so starting September 2022. Um, and uh, yeah, writing, journalism, you know, all these areas that, that are in my department, I think students come with a, with a, with a real passion for, for that and that's inspiring in itself. But I think to immerse yourself in the arts, we're in London, which is a centre for the arts. And now that the pandemic has allowed it we can we've, we've returned to live performance going to the cinema going to art galleries it's all open here and i think that's you know how i inspire myself and always have done and as a student of the arts 
um, that that's what I loved, you know, that I could do that. And that was part of my study, really, to, to understand how this all feeds in to um, film, in my case, but obviously uh, any of these art subjects, it's good to know about the different art forms. And yeah, the storytelling unites us all, I think, across the piece. All right. Thank you so much for um, answers from all of you. And uh, yes, to the audience, if you have any questions, please do type it in the comment section and I will go through it at the end of the um, discussion. Um, and there's a student called PK who says hi to all of us. Hello, PK. Yep. All right, so moving on to the next question. What should students consider when they are making their decision on their course and university? Um, I can jump in on that one. I'm yeah. sure we're all going to say very similar yes. things. But I would say um, really go with where your passion is, where your interest is, um, start there. And then obviously then you need to explore what the fit is in terms of what your um, current experience and or formal qualifications might be for that particular course. But not to forget that your experience outside of formal qualifications is also important to us to, to so, so keep that both in view and don't and don't just um, kind of give up on the first hurdle, right? You might need to find a circular way to where you want to go, but there's usually a pathway to get to that course that really fits with what your interest and passion is. 100%. I think maybe I would jump in and also add that if I'd say it's okay to ask questions. I think sometimes um, applicants forget that they can contact us if there's something specific. Um, we have a wide breadth of courses um, within our department, arts and creative industry. So it's okay to not really know really where you want to go. As Natalie mentioned earlier on, that majority of these courses, you know, segue into each other as you progress your career. Um, and there are ways in which we can sort of resolve that as you go along. And when you ask questions, you will kind of maybe get a good gist of, okay, maybe I should just try this. A lot of it is just jumping. Um, you never know where you're going to to land, but you will land somewhere. Um, and I think that's the excitement really, just I guess stepping out in faith, I would say. Um, but I'm sure you will enjoy it no, no matter what. Um, and this maybe something that helped me when I was looking as a student way back when is not to pay attention so much to the name of the university. I would say actually pay attention to, um, you know, look at, the, look at the research of their tutors and your lecturers, find out what they're doing um, and, you know, how that could support you in your development and your career as well. And if this is really aligning to where you want to go. Yeah, I think that's really valid uh, point, Beatrice, in terms of the choice of university. Every university in the UK is very different. It has its own culture, its own um, um, set of courses. Obviously, the, the, the lecturers, I think, who's going to teach you, as, as Beatrice said, is really important. But also how, how, they, how you're going to learn. And one thing that we do at UEL very well is active learning, particularly in the arts. You learn by doing. And that's not true at all universities. So I think, you know, that really is, is, is important. We are very modern in our approaches and our staff also are very collegiate. So, you know, we work in, in, in a very bespoke way with students in fairly small groups. And that allows you to really be nurtured in terms of your own personality, your own passions and your own identity. And yeah, just to say that again, that Beatrice mentioned, yeah, we are a very diverse community in all ways. And I think, you know, it's just, it gives, gives uh, UEL very much a, um, a real culture of its own in that way. So very strong culture of acceptance. Yeah. Finish there. <laughs> and I can see on the... Yeah, I can see on the chat yeah. that PK's asked about how to learn these type of skills and um, that can vary in different countries, right, depending on what your education True. system is and what those routes are in. So um, we do talk and interview and, and give students opportunities that apply to us to show us what their experience is and have that conversation and that's so they 
may not have the formal qualifications, but they might have um, actually done uh, out of school or out of college kind of extracurricular stuff that is supporting them. Um, but we also offer foundation courses at level three and they really are aimed at people that maybe have a little bit of experience but are very passionate about our subject areas in media and fashion and performing arts but haven't yet had the opportunity to build those skills. So there's two ways to join us I suppose at level three um, and at level four which would be the start of an undergraduate degree. Perfect, thank you so much for that. Um, the next question. All right, so the university has invested 18 million pounds for its facilities. Can you please talk about the Connected Campus project and how it has impacted ACI students? So, yes. If any, you want to take that, uh, Natalie, and I can feed in. Yeah, for sure. I'll, I'll start and then I'll pass over because each of the areas have got kind of like different angles on this, I think. Um, yes. In the broad scope, much of the um, first stage of the connected campus meant that we now have many teaching spaces with additional um, technical cameras etc in them which means we can move quite swiftly between online learning and in-person learning on campus learning and everything in between it's also enabled us to um, develop our very specialist technical kit so in my area that's like sound recording video recording for performance, um, musical instruments. Um, so really specialist uh, kit that we need. And also to ensure that our rehearsal spaces and studio spaces have theater lighting, for example, and sound decks and things like that. On a bigger scale, what, it's, what one notices on our lovely campus is there's really exciting stuff happening every day in terms of reconfiguring the social learning spaces, the kind of collaborative learning spaces. And perhaps particular to our school, we have a new gallery space that's in development. We have a space that's gonna be outward facing in terms of performance. Um, and perhaps segueing over to Rosemary, we are also um, have been developing our TV and film resources. So maybe I'll pass over to Rosemary now. Yeah, so basically that's been a lot of investment in the teaching spaces, thinking about how students learn in the modern day and how you know I mentioned already that we learn by doing active learning so you know we don't teach anymore with sort of fixed seating and fixed computing but it's gone over to a more flexible model so we've got three new um, areas in our media um, um, media spaces if you like um, that have uh, laptop trolleys so that means that's up-to-date computing that can be used uh, by students who don't have their own laptop, uh, that these are flexible and also flexible for staff, that, that, that they can be used in different spaces and uh, taken in specialist spaces if need be. And these areas, unfortunately, I can't show any pictures, are very modern and comfortable with sofas and that kind of thing. So it's about collaborative learning as well. Um, we understand that you learn often by talking to each other. We do a lot of group learning as well. So having a, little, a nice space with a carpet where you can be comfortable, you can plug in your phone and all those sort of things is really important these days. So that's what we've been developing uh, with this investment recently. Right. And I guess, so, mm, oh, go on. And just yeah. to add, I guess, for fashion, um, we've also, and, and for the, the for majority of ACI, we've also got the career zone, which has been newly launched. So again, to support students in the development, not just when they graduate, but graduate, but before they graduate and getting them on par with their career um, ideas or where they want to go. Um, in fashion specifically, we've invested in a large amount of new sort of technology and machinery to support more of an industrial and professional look to garment making, for instance. We've also got a lot more software, so Clo3 b which some of you um, I'm sure have heard about, and it's just really developing um, clothing or collection using digital as opposed to always making. Um, new printing facilities in our textile studios, and also a great sort of magazine or book archive room that's just newly been installed, which we'll be sharing with media in fashion journalism, for instance, and so much more. 
Perfect. <clears throat> Sorry. So just to sum it all up, we have three campuses with state-of-the-art facilities, and you can actually have a virtual tour to see each room, to see all the facilities, and uh, like how Rosemary um, said about pictures and videos, there's plenty of them on our UEL website. So please do go visit it, and you can have an entire idea about UEL and its campus. Okay. So the next question is, what tips do you have for students to best prepare themselves for the sector during their studies? So this is during their studies. Um, so I'll jump in and maybe just talk about the career zone, as I just mentioned before. So we have a large offering within the university to support students in developing themselves uh, for their career. And that includes networking events, um, mentorship, we have a dedicated um, uh, officer for ACI that sort of sits down with um, tutors to plan sessions on mentoring skills, um, I guess, and preparing them for their careers. Um, we also have a newly implemented module called Mental Wealth. And so that really looks into uh, supporting students in mental well-being in the actual professional workplace but also very course specific to what processes are utilized in industry to ensure that they are progressing and being able to be supported as they go along in their career, which not a lot of, um, I guess, other institutions or sometimes when you get into the professional workplace, you're, you're actually being taught. So we're really, really preparing you. I guess we, we are career focused and led university. And that's something that we have seen um, um, in our own uh, career development, being industry professionals as well. Thank you. So, uh, Rosemary, could yeah, yeah. So, what tips would I give? I mean, I think students that are successful at university, those who are proactive and kind of courageous as well, they go out there, they um, engage with everything that a university offers, and it's not just the timetable course, there's so many things going on at any one time at UEL. Um, for example, you might want to uh, get involved in um, some volunteering or even working for the university and you know you can develop your work skills as you go along. I think those students that'd be proactive. I mean one thing in media, you know there's so many software um, uh, packages available students get free free access to the whole of the adobe creative cloud suite for example uh, that's a wonderful facility over the three years you know it's worth thousands of pounds you know once once um you're in the in the in the world of work um you probably have access to it but as a as a student that that's really brilliant but use it i mean the other one is linkedin learning you've got access to the whole of linkedin learning when you're a student some students don't bother, but the really successful one, the tip is use it, learn it, you know, use every minute of your time to, to develop yourself, uh, both personally and professionally. That's, yeah. So, um, yeah, we have two more minutes left, so, uh, and Natalie. Please. Yeah, I would just reiterate all of that and um, just to remember that the staff are the resource, they are an amazing resource, right? So remembering that your peers and your teaching team and everyone you meet in your experience are going to be your first network that you're building. So just to treat it like that from day one. Right, perfect. So the last and final question, okay, is how do you see the future of your subject area? That's fashion, film, performing arts. How do you see the future of your subject area? And we need fast fire right here. So I'm just going to jump in. And I think it really is about interdisciplinary working, collaborative working, being able to network, and really um, being aware of those enterprising skills that we're all going to need in any, uh, any creative industry subject area. Agreed. Um, and to add to that, again, I think it's having a clearer mind, um, an open mind in culture and diversity, um, and yeah, um, sort of collaborative work as well, community. Yeah, I mean, I'd agree with all that and say, yeah, convergence. 
getting involved in every area, crossing, like, like Natalie said, interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary. So film and games, for example, games and, and fashion, all coming together. You know, the boundaries are blurring. That's the future. Well, thank you so much for answering all the questions. Um, and um, yeah, I think that's about it. So if you need to get in touch with, so this is for the audience, if you need to get in touch with them, their details are there on the websites and anything which you want to know, it's there on the UEL website. All right. Thank you Thanks so, so much. much. Thank Thanks you. for joining us. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.